Hey everybody, friends out there on the interwebs, I'm Jason Coleman and you're watching BevNerd Video Podcast, courtesy of BevNerd.com, your favorite place for soft drink and snack food reviews and beverage deals and beverage contests and promotions, so check that all out right there. It's the source, it's the place to be. You can find various links of where you need to go. But uh, before I start rambling on too much, we got a show to do, people. Not just any show, but this one's very special. Why? Not only am I doing a soft drink review, I'm also doing a beverage accessory product review. First time ever, I'm really stoked about that. I'm just holding it all in this area with my Halo t-shirt. Um, our drink today is a drink I got from an international market in the Rainbow Cities. This is D&G Ginger Beer. Uh, it's imported from Jamaica, so it's actually Jamaican ginger beer with real Jamaican ginger. Um, it's so hot and humid already, it's got some condensation and stuff of that nature. But the product I will be reviewing today is called The Beverage Caddy. Um, this is just one of the two I have. It's got little, little quotes or whatever on it. But um, that's going to be the main event, and I'll talk about it more. But first, let's talk about the ginger beer. There we go. There it is. I'm with D&G Jamaican Ginger Beer. It's made by D&G, which stands for the business partnership of Thomas Geddes and Eugene Desnos. They started their own beverage company in 1918 in Jamaica, where they had great success selling famous brands of beverages like Red Stripe Beer, Pepsi, 7-Up products, and even their own line of D&G soft drinks. In Jamaica, they don't have the tea. It's just SOF drinks. Anyways, um, in 1970 they became a public company. D&G remained owners of the company until 93 when Guinness Brewing Worldwide acquired them. And lastly, 1999, the soft drink division was sold to Pepsi Americas. 1999, of course. Um, in modern times, ginger beer is um, non-alcoholic. Um, it used to have alcohol in it, and then they didn't anymore. But um, they were really popular in the prohibition times when they were non-alcoholic because uh, someone had to get some sort of fix. Um, as far as like the similarities between ginger ale and ginger beer, they don't really have a whole lot different. It really depends on the formulas between the, uh, you know, whatever, whatever companies make theirs different. Um, this one's actually a really pale shade. It's not very amber colored like your Buffalo Rock ginger ale. And um, it's even probably a little bit lighter color than the Ugavi ginger ale that I've tried before. I like ginger ale, but I don't really drink it that often. Ooh, that's very interesting smelling. That's very strong. Um, it's got a really sweet scent to it. Man, that's good. Um, it's sweetened with cane sugar. Um, it does have the spice of ginger, similar to buffalo ginger ale, but it's not as strong and not as uh, breathtaking. But however, this is this is really good. It's like it's probably the sweetest ginger ale I've had before. Um, it is sweeter than the two I've had on the show. Um, and I would say it's spicier than um, your average ginger ale, like Canada Dry or whatever. But wow, that's pretty darn tasty. Um, it's got a cat on it. That's the logo. He may be called Cat McGee or something. But uh, all in all, D&G Ginger Beer is good. I'm drunk on happiness. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Oh, wow. But anyways, um, I'm going to talk to you about the beverage caddy, and then I'm going to take it to the streets, um, courtesy of Michael McDonald, and actually do some field testing. So that should be pretty, pretty fun. Um, let me talk to you about how it works. Um, what this is, is a vinyl covering, kind of like the ones that you see whenever you get a to-go cup of coffee and um, it's on there. Um, you don't have to use those anymore. You can just tell Starbucks to just, you know, keep them and don't waste them because uh, wasting stuff sucks. But anyways, you place the, the cup as far, gently of course, as far into the, um, the sleeve as possible and it's got two soft but yet sturdy things and you, there you go, two little strings. Um, I was, um, I got this in the mail from Beverage Caddy to review. She did leave a note saying, even though I'm a guy, I shouldn't try to do this, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Oh my God, this is awesome. <laughs> I could just drink all my coffee all day long. Anyways, wow. <laughs> Let's take it to the streets. All right, everybody. 
All right, everybody, here I am. I'm here in Atala, Alabama to show you some field tests with the beverage caddy. Here I have is a styrofoam cup filled to the brim almost with uh, some fresh hot coffee, a plastic lid which is open, but I'm gonna leave it down because you're not gonna be traveling with it open like an idiot. So I'm gonna have it closed like that. I'm going to have different scenarios that you may have discovered really suck for you without the beverage caddy and then I'm gonna go back do them again with the beverage caddy edit them all together for your visual sensory organs here's scenario number one OMG I just got a text about this rad party they want to know if I'm gonna be there uh, but I've got my phone and I've got my uh, coffee and I do not want to put it on the ground because there are ants there all right I'm gonna pretend to text I gotta turn it sideways oh no. oh sh that's really hot still uh see the problem is um, you can't you can't uh, hold the phone and text at the same time or you burn your thumb like I just did so uh, scenario number one solution coming soon all right here is the solution to scenario number one with the beverage caddy oh yeah Billy that will be one righteous party I gotta text all my homies about it right now and look at there I could text lol FTW and smiley face all with one finger rather holding the beverage caddy text away it's pretty sweet scenario number two let's pretend this drink crate is actually a really really heavy box of stuff and I'm moving it around but I don't want to set my coffee down because some jerk will throw it away I would hate that so if I'm trying to hold this and try to walk at the same time it's kind of spilling and I'm, I gotta pretend this is really heavy so it's, it's, it's really I don't get a good grip on the box I'm spilling hot coffee all over my fingertips. Not good. All right, here I am with this imaginary, um, we'll just say it's a box of 15 pizzas. I don't care. Look, I can hold the beverage, my hot coffee, with one finger and have almost all of my gripping power on this. And I can swing around like so and not a drop spilled. That's pretty impressive. Scenario number three I have here, I've got two shopping bags. One's filled to the brim, if bags had a brim filled with baked beans the other one has a gallon of water in my right hand i have a scalding hot cup of coffee and the door keys let's see if i can get the door open i got my key but if i try to turn it oh i just spilled hot coffee all over my hand that's not good scenario number three i just went shopping i've got to get inside this door with my hot coffee and the beverage caddy and the key just in my index finger and thumb I can put it in and turn it with just these two fingers. That concludes um, my field test studies of the beverage caddy. And I gotta say, I'm very impressed. Um, I didn't spill any coffee whenever I had the beverage caddy. No. There's one more test I've gotta try. Uh, don't try this at home. Uh, you could burn children, but this is the ultimate and final test of the beverage caddy. Gonna take it around town. Look at that. No coffee spilled. You can just go crazy. I don't care. You can play. You can play air guitar with your coffee, and it doesn't spill. So we're gonna head back home and conclude this episode of Bab Nerd. And that's what happens when you let Jason Coleman out into public. Wasn't that fun, kids? So let me give you some information about this product and how you can get your own by going to barbco.biz. Beverage caddy for only five dollars. Um, the two designs I have are only one of many. And if you're a business, you can buy these in bulk. You totally can. Um, I kind of like it a lot. So um, go check it out, barbco.biz. Um, last but not least, I have some awesome, awesome, truly awesome, warms my heart to tell everybody, uh, confirmed, this is confirmed, uh, throwback Pepsi Mountain Dew coming back in August for the third time around. I'm freaking stoked. I know it's been hugely popular every time it comes out, and I wish it never went away, but alas, it does, but like the McRib, it's back in action, baby. It tastes way better. So check out and be on the lookout for that coming August and then there on forward. I'm going to plug a couple more things. And uh, yeah, go to BevNerd.com. Check that out. Uh, you can get a link to the BevNerd Facebook fan page where you can communicate with other BevNerd friends of ours. Um, that's a good place. Twitter.com slash BevNerd. I mentioned that. Um, if, if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to take this show on the road with you, check out iTunes where you can subscribe 
to this podcast and put it on your iPod and things of that nature. Or you can just watch it on YouTube. So wherever you're watching this, give it thumbs up, some star ratings, some positive reviews, and things and things and things. So uh, I gotta go to school. Goodbye, everybody.